All right, so we're back. This is EXO, along with the magical girl, Celia Rose. Hello, everybody. And Chad, Macross Mecha Manual Chad. What's up, Chad? Yes, hello, everybody. Last week, we were just talking about like, oh, you know, that there's a new album coming out. And then you wake up and it's like, oh, there's a new series. What? There's a yeah, new there's series. So there's the, about they're making that some much. stuff on the new mobile game. There was mm -hmm. a concert. What do you mean? I, honestly, I, I read about it and then I put it on Twitter and then, and then I got off. I was just like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to read everything about this. It's going to be the same thing over and over. You know, what is it going to be about? You don't know. You think it's going to have been made? I don't know. Is Lady M, are they going to reveal who it is? It's like. I don't know. I don't know, but I hope it's cool. I've been in contact with um, Patrick from the Ono oh Anime Podcast because uh -huh. he offered to buy stuff for me at the Yokohama Arena. And so we had been messaging for the things that I asked him to pick up for me. And he's super awesome because he got me T-shirts and an art book mm -hmm. that you can only get at the concert. And when I woke up this morning, I had a message from him that said, by the way, they announced a new series. And I had another one from Craig on Twitter that was like, hey, New Macross, and then of course it was all over Facebook. Yeah. So it was like surreal. You know, before when we were done with Delta, like there was this joke, like, you know, oh, we'll get another Macross series in like 10 years. Cause, you know, there was such a big gap between when Frontier came out and when Delta came out. It was like, what, eight, like eight years, seven or eight years. So now we're getting one like literally a year and a half later. Do you guys think that this is a scary thing that is coming too soon? I was actually a bit alarmed. Yeah, I, I uh, it seems uh, it seems very strange to be seeing a new Macross project like this so soon, um, just because uh, up until this point, Macross hasn't really been one of those. Um, uh, super franchises where they release a new Macross anime every year or every two years. It's always been something that, okay, well, when, you know, Kawamori wants to work on a Macross project because he's available and he's got the inspiration to do it, mm -hmm. then he works on it. Other than that, he goes and does different things like Aquarian or Armored Core or Vision of Escaflone or whatever else he happens to be working on at the time. I'm so hyped. <laughs> I was kind of excited when, when I heard about it. I woke up pretty early. Like, I've been waking up late these days but for some reason i woke up like around 6 30 this morning for no reason wow yeah and i was just like uh and i was still half asleep but then i was like oh i had my phone next to me so i just picked it up and i looked and i was like what <laughs> you know this is probably like a dream i'll wake up i shook myself out of it and i was like oh shit there, this is real there's a new macross series coming out well and i had a feeling they were gonna announce something because yeah. the name of the of the album and the name of the concert is Warikire ga Tomaranai, which is Wakiri Can't Be Stopped. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were going to get like a movie announcement, maybe another album announcement. Yeah. Like I, I just knew something was coming just because of the name, but I couldn't have anticipated a new Macross series. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, we got something, but we have something really big. I mean, that's the question, right? We're assuming that that leads into that, that name of the, the album, you know, Walkery Can't Be Stopped. And it has something to do with the new series. So what does that mean? I don't know, honestly. <laughs> like, I just thought, like, I thought we were going to get something small. Like, maybe, hey, we're going to have a cafe. Like, Frontier had a cafe event for a few months yeah, that's what I was in, in Tokyo, too. you know? Or like, hey, guys, guess what? pachinko because that's just <laughs> you know that's the other go-to you know it's like if we're not going to get new content you know on dvd or drama C cds or whatever we're going to get a pachinko game but but i didn't think that we would have like a brand new macro series yeah but it is interesting with the timing though because kamomori came to anime expo this summer this past summer in 2016 to talk about the next which is his other uh non macross that's project true. i forgot about that so I don't know how much involvement he'll have in the new Macross if he's focusing on the next. Mm -hmm. um, the next may actually be close to completion or like at a point where he doesn't have to be as involved if he's going to be working on a new Macross that's going to debut in 2018. So we'll have to see. I'm excited, though. I love Macross. But this you have a great suspicions time. that Walker might be um, involved in the new series. Uh, no. You don't think so? Not so far. No. I have... I do have theories about the 35th anniversary because of Mari Ijima being announced as a guest at Anime Expo. It's very random to have her invited to Anime Expo. And it's all very convenient. Like, Walkyrie is wrapping up their Yokohama concerts <laughs> and they can't be stopped. Mari Ijima hasn't worked on another anime since Macross and she's been invited as a guest to Anime Expo where Kawamori was a guest the previous year. And it's the 35th anniversary of Macross. 
the pieces just seem to be kind of falling into place a little too easily where I'm like, what's Anime Expo doing? <laughs> Are they going to do something really cool for, for the 35th anniversary? I don't know, but it makes me excited. Megumi Nakajima came out of retirement also recently. Yeah, she's back. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but I know she has like a different series that she's working on. Yeah, she does the ending theme for the anime Fuka that's airing right now. And it's catchy. It, that's actually the reason I watched Fuka to begin with, was I wanted to hear her song. Because Victor Entertainment is blocked on YouTube in the United uh. States. So I can't watch any of the preview clips. But yeah, new Macross. Oh man, <laughs> so exciting. I'm so hyped. I know. This is awesome. Me too. I was thinking it was Juno resonating with me, woke me up. I was like having a dream and she was telling me, hey, new Macross, new Macross. <laughs> and then she started licking my face and I was like, oh no, it's the dog. God. <laughs> <laughs> and then the dog says, hey, new Macross, new Macross. <laughs> Those are some like uh, bad... interesting dreams you're having there. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not, it sounds like a bad commercial. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I think that's where I got it. What do you, what do you think, Chad? Uh, it was definitely, yeah, it's definitely something that's uh, like exciting for sure. Um, I'm just, I'm curious like what form it's going to take and uh, what they're going to do with it. So, Chad, did you notice which um, Valkyries are on the logo? Okay, so we got the VF1, the VF25, and the 31, it looks like. It looks like a VF, okay, so it's, it goes uh, VF31 on the left, VF1 center, VF25 on the right. Then underneath, the little ones look like a VF0. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the, what, the 19? Uh, it's a forward swept wing design. It could be the 19, but the it could also the 19 could also be the one in purple on the right. Or that could be the fire bomber, right? Yeah, it could be the 19, and then it could be the uh, then it could be the VF 19 Excalibur custom. I like that. It looks so cool. I know. I want this on a jacket. Like I would want it on like a sleeve or something. Yeah, that'd be a really cool like shoulder patch, like yeah. on a like a jacket or something, like a varsity jacket. Take note, Cospo. We want Macross <laughs> Sukajan jackets. Those like super awesome, like embroidered souvenir, like baseball jackets uh -huh. with Macross stuff on them. <laughs> I would buy one. So, Chad, you've been listening to the new Walker album nonstop. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I haven't. <laughs> In the words of Obi Wan Kenobi, should I have? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's good it's actually a pretty solid album you i mean it's definitely a bonus track album like if i had to compare it to walkyrie attack i would say walkyrie attack is definitely a better album but the songs that we get on uh walkyrie can't be stopped are pretty neat like their intro song is really cute like i imagine that'd be really fun at like at a live concert. Don't know if I'll listen to it every day, but like if you were at a concert and, you know, everyone comes out and they sing their little bit about their age and their role in the group while doing some cute choreography, like that would be super fun. <laughs> we'll find out on the Blu-ray how they sang it. In the yeah, concert. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see it. So yeah. hype. This album really like woke up the fandom also. Our, our group just all of a sudden, everybody's like posting and there's all kinds of people making videos and that guy that made the duet track. Oh yeah, Raphael. Yeah. He did a really good job on those. Yeah. They're awesome. Well, and I know a big draw for this album in particular was the Frontier song covers. Yeah. Like I probably wouldn't have bought this bonus track album if it only had the one single on it, the Walkyrie Gato Maranai song. Uh -huh. Like that song is really fun and I love the music video for it. It's it's super super cool and i love how they're like preparing for their concert and it's a really cute way to promote their concert i think and also get the song out there but like i just wanted to hear the rest of freya sing Sekan hiko because i think she sang it a little bit in the tv series mm -hmm. during a flashback and then as a little kid though yeah well and they were also using yoko kano's arrangement of diamond crevice mm -hmm. and i love yoko kano's arrangement of diamond crevice so I was really excited for the Mikumo song. <laughs> we did talk about this before in our former show, the recap. And, you know, to finally hear it, it's pretty cool. It's, I guess this week is all about tall asks, right? It's, it, I wanted to hear um, Mikumo sing uh, Diamond Crevice, and then we got it. Some guy made that duet track. I'm like, oh, man, we're getting everything we ask for. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It is cool. But, like, as much as I was excited for the Mikumo Diamond Crevice track, it actually ended up not being as good as I was hoping it would be. <laughs> like, um, Maine's version reigns supreme in my book. Like, Mikamos is good. Like, not saying that Jenna's, like, not good at singing it. Like, I, I got it. She's I'm, really good. I'm a you bigger know? Um, Juna 
fan than a main fan. And I love main, don't get me wrong, but something about Juno's voice just like gets me. But yeah, I gotta agree. Like it's just more uh, emotional mains. Somebody told me that this was an uh, audition track though. Both Frontier songs were audition tracks. Although they were uh, the audition tracks for Minori and Juna? Yeah, that's what somebody told me. I, don't, I can't, you know. Yeah, I haven't heard that it was Seikan Hiko, but I remember there was that video that was floating around of Minori singing Do You Remember Love? Do You Remember Love, Like yeah. back in the spring, I think, like spring or summer. Yeah. So I, I do remember that, but that'd be really cool if like these were the tracks that, that were kind of like their demo, you know, yeah. to like be like, hey, we would like to see if you'll fit into this group and these are the songs you want you to sing. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. So. I really like Freya's Seikan on Hiko because it's super cute. It's like, it's perfect. <laughs> what about the Kaname track, the Giraffe Blues? Oh, I wanted that one. <laughs> I wanted that one to be in the original arrangement. Yeah, like, me too. I wasn't you know, expecting like, the piano solo thingy. Like, it's good. Like, it's pretty. And it's in a, like, it's lower, like, a low enough key that now I can sing it without too much trouble. So prepare yourselves at karaoke. Because we can all sing giraffe blues now. <laughs> yes, we can. Right, Chad? <laughs> Chad's the... I'm just going to stay quiet during this segment. Nobody wants to hear me sing. Trust me. No, you could put me on that list. But Chad... They want to know your blues, Chad. Yeah, what's your blues, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's not a good idea. <laughs> Something best avoided. We'll see. <laughs> kind of like the we'll plague. See. After three shots, we'll see how resistant you are. <laughs> well, no, I'm not resistant. I'll sing, but <laughs> I'm telling you guys now, you know. You're not going to like what you hear. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. That's, that's... Fair enough. Oh, my God, now I'm scared. <laughs> I, can I, accept sing... the I accept the challenge. <laughs> I can sing right now if you want me to. <laughs> uh, after that, I don't know. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> We've only been back uh, a couple of minutes I want to lose everybody already. You liked it better when I was just reluctant, huh? <laughs> I don't think anybody's claiming to be a good singer. We're just, you know, we're just telling you that, you know, we've got plans. We got plans for Seattle. <laughs> so, yeah, the the album. Uh, Chad, did you have any songs that you liked on the new album? Or how did you feel it. on it? No, I, I haven't even heard it yet, so. Ah, okay. Did you did you listen to I mean did you listen to the Frontier albums at all like is that something that didn't int interest you Oh no no I like or I, did I love you? like like when I like the Macross music yeah I'm like way into it With Frontier I was into it as well I collected two of the albums I think I have two CDs and then um, I listened to the other tracks when they released them as well And uh, I like the music for Frontier for the most part I'm very much into it and uh, I've liked most of the Macross music every once in a while something comes along and i'm just like i'm not really into but for the most part that's been one of the more like the main attractions of macross too is the music right so stuff like uh the macross frontier soundtrack the macross plus soundtrack and the original soundtracks to like do you remember love sdf macross and flashback those are definitely my favorite macross soundtracks for sure the other stuff um, Macross 2 and uh, Macross 7, yeah, not so much. And uh, Macross Delta, well, I think, you know, we talked about it on the show and stuff like that. And I, I'm just not a huge fan of the the soundtrack from Macross Delta, unfortunately. Yeah, I feel that, though. Like, I didn't buy Valkyrie Trap, which is the second album. I don't have a physical copy of that one because I didn't really like it as much at the time. Because at the time, you only had Valkyrie Attack and then the two singles that had come out before yeah. and after that so i don't have valkyrie trap but now that i have attack the second single that i bought in uh in tokushima and valkyrie can't be stopped i feel like i have to have trap just to kind of complete the set here but it didn't interest me enough like to go out and buy it so so i get that but actually the music for valkyrie is is interesting like it definitely has its own sound but it's kind of like i'm not sure how i want to place it you know like the music in Frontier definitely was was poppy. Like it was a very like it was a definitely pop music. But uh -huh. Kano also added like this level of like epic like swoosh to yeah. to a lot of the songs, you know. So it felt like bigger than pop music. 
and and while Kyrie is still very pop music that and it has some of that swoosh for some of the songs where it feels more epic but some of them are also like okay it's just a it's an idol song and it kind of like fluctuates between the two feelings in my opinion that's interesting yeah i mean i, I really liked uh frontier music but for some reason this soundtrack this these um idol tracks i like them more i mean i understand main's like a better trained singer and everything but i don't know I, I, there's some aspect of it that's re- very 80s and 70s with uh, the walkery songs especially some on the on the new album I guess I could relate to. I don't know. I just I just like them a lot, and it's it's the last thing I would have thought that I would have taken away from from this series, but it's the one thing that uh, stuck to me the most, which you know, which are the songs. Yeah, I wish I was at the concert yesterday and the day before. Did you see some of the pictures? As far as the like for the crowd size during and the stuff? concert. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any from during the concert, but I saw pictures on Twitter um, from several different accounts of like the crowd size. And, yeah. and when I looked on uh, the Yokohama website of, to look at the concert merchandise, they had a map of the arena, and it's two floors. And mm. the pictures that I saw of, of the inside were like, it was packed. Like, it didn't look like there were any, like, empty spots inside the Yokohama arena. It yeah. was crazy. And they had, a, um, they had a demo for the new Macross mobile game, Uta Macross, that apparently, like, the demo for that, like, the line filled up super fast. And it was really hard to actually, like, get in to try the de- the game. Like, by the time people got to it, the demo was already over. So they, they had a lot going on yesterday. And I... We have a couple huge. of pictures on uh, the Macross Delta Facebook page of the crowd in the concert. They were allowed to take pictures, I guess, before and after the concert. It's pretty packed. That's a, that's a huge arena. I want to go someday. <laughs> go third to a live, Macross third live. live. Yeah, third live. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Fuck Seattle, man. Let's go. Let's <laughs> fucking Japan. Hey, no. Actually, we should talk about that and like just yeah. let people know we'll actually be in Seattle. Go ahead. Let them know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting me on the spot, Alex. <laughs> Somebody brought it up. <laughs> well, Chad, why don't you sing it to us? <laughs> I don't know anything that rhymes with Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't have to rhyme. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll be in Seattle. What about Washington? <laughs> That's even less than rhymes with Washington. <laughs> okay. No, you do it. No, we're all just going to meet up at SakuraCon April 14, 15, and 16. Uh, yes. We're not going to have any panel or anything. We're just going to... You know, we're just going to meet up. There's going to be other people that's going to show up and hang out. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. Chad's going to be singing. I'm going to be observing, maybe taking pictures. <laughs> and Celia will be sparkling <laughs> <in> live. <laughs> oh, man. I'll have to uh, step up my sparkle game. Bring, bring, like, the biggest, like, container of body glitter I can find. And just Turn douse in myself 10. in it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's gonna be fun um i actually haven't been at soccer con since 2014 uh and i'll be cosplaying from macross all weekend i'm super excited because i'm gonna cosplay with my friends um and i'm don't know when i'll get around to setting it up but it will be before con i'm gonna set up a facebook event through my cosplay page for like a meetup at soccer con for other macross fans so if you happen to be in the seattle area on easter weekend we're gonna be there and you can meet up with us and hang out and talk about macross and it's gonna be fun yeah, we could all yeah, pretend we'll i'll pretend to be dancing valkyries to make up for the ones that were not in delta be fun. we're gonna go to the fish <laughs> market throw fish at each other and then go up to space needle <laughs> We'll put it all on video <laughs> uh, with, with some sort of uh, Beach Boy soundtrack or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sunset Beach. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sunset, Sunset Beach. Beach. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, there you go. Now you, now you got me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Macross. No, it'll be great. It'll be the Macross recap show date to Sunset Beach. And like just all three of us going to like the most touristy things in the Seattle area. <laughs> <laughs> Get in front of the space needle and do the do the three hundred sixty degree turn. <laughs> it'll be like a cheesy seventies like montage thing. It'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that sounds great. I love it. Let's do it. If you see a Min May cosplayer, it's more than likely me. I've never been to Seattle, so yeah, I'm excited. I've always wanted to go. So yeah. 
Are you guys are you guys ready for the Macross 35 recap show or whatever it's called? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back at it again. Oh yeah, like week. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that it's not happening this year. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, we could use the the break, I guess. But uh yeah, for sure. I will give any new Macross series a shot no matter how out there or uh or crazy it's it may seem let's talk about that let's talk about what you expect and what you would want after just getting off delta i mean for me i'll start i would really like for them to include mirage because i feel like man i could use some more mirage i think um hayate and freya's stories are done unless they carry over wakare and then you know i would want freya to be there you know maybe mirage joins <laughs> maybe that's what those posters were about she yeah she keeps joining them in the illustrations <laughs> yeah so maybe they make that happen but um man I, yeah i would love to see her i mean i can't speculate about um new uh characters so as far as uh, past characters and being so close to Delta, I think that's the one main character that I would want carried over. You know how I feel about Arid, so <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Your Arid salt will be missed. Yeah, that's the one thing, I guess. <laughs> if they carry it over, then you guys, that'll be your tall ass for the new series. <laughs> More Arid, extra dry. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I loved your attitude towards Arid. It was the best. Was so uh, I hope we have a character like that just because I want to see that reaction. That you, just- <laughs> you just want the salt. I I'll be like that salt. guy, the barbecue guy. and uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, just the, 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 the throwing salt, salt over his elbow. <laughs> Yeah, because so. it's, it's his sort of like video of him doing that thing to that steak or whatever the hell it was that he was preparing. <laughs> it's become like what people say on on that. It's like the big the, the first big meme of 2017. Yeah, it is. It's just it's crazy. It's everywhere. Everybody is posting it, and uh, I've seen it all over uh, the Facebook and the internet and just the news sites and blogs and everything. And it's just it's so funny. I love Salty Alex. Salty Alex is the best. <laughs> I agree. Oh, Salty Alex. Alex is fun. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I don't know Go ahead. if it was Aaron itself or if it was Alex. Maybe. That's, that's it. I think it was Alex. <laughs> yeah, I like, think it was Alex. Because then, like, Stubborn Nato ran with it on Twitter. And remember all the great, like, Aaron tweets yeah, that he the, made? Like, those yeah, were just awesome. amazing. That did add to it. <laughs> those were wonderful. I love the Aaron tweets. Added fuel to the fire, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, the Bernardo. <laughs> Those were so funny. good. So did you guys figure out like what you would want? I would like a lot less burger. A lot less burger. <laughs> like all the exposition at the end of Delta just really killed the momentum for me. Like episodes yeah. like 19 through 22, I think it was. Like it was just really slow story movement where everything mm-hmm. was being told instead of being shown. I would like a lot less of that. In the next Macross show. Definitely. Much less burger. That's the thing that worries me. That it's it's so close. Because it seemed like they rushed that last you know half. After they decided to make a two cores. And then now I'm like. Are they going to rush this? Please don't. But it's 2018. That's that's a lot of time. Hopefully they, they just make one show. Instead of two halves of one show. You know. Hopefully it's one long story. Yeah. And I know. I think we talked about it. When it was airing too, but like that point where they were just doing all exposition felt like they were just kind of spinning their wheels, like to abide their time in case they moved too fast. Definitely. Yeah. God, please let this be good. <laughs> so, yeah, less of that. And uh, oh, and I would like to see more of the really awesome magical girl transformations that everyone hated at the beginning <laughs> i've uh i've been watching macross frontier with my friends recently like rewatching it and uh-huh. cheryl has so many transformations because she also has holographic suits mm-hmm. <laughs> that i'm like why was everyone complaining frontier did it first <laughs> so were they i would... featured like the the way they were in in um delta like uh you know kind of like a yeah so, transformation so they like were? Oh, yeah. So, like, it wasn't, like, in Delta where it was, like, the pieces of the costumes popping. But Cheryl had sequences, like, in the very beginning when she transforms into her outfit for Don't Be Late. And she sheds her costume uh, for from the blue outfit into the little black top with the booty shorts and the red suspenders. 
that's a glittery like dissolvement of that costume in episode seven. Yeah. Cause I just watched it in episode seven when she finishes singing diamond crevice and she transforms into her outfit for don't be late. She is like raised up in the air and her costume dissolves away to, for her naked body. And then it appears on her like in glittery, like it's like crawling up her like limbs to form the costume. Like it's part of the effect of the suit. And Valkyrie had the same thing. Most of the biases just stigmatized fans but from what they saw from the yeah advertisement and promotions and stuff. Well, and I think part of it is because like it look, it does look very Magical Girl-like. And I like Magical Girls anyway. So for <laughs> me, I thought it was really cool. But there was enough of a gap between Frontier and Delta that it's easy to forget that kind of stuff. You know, like going back and because re- I haven't watched Frontier, the TV series, in probably about three years or so. And going back and watching it, and I'm like, hey, (laughs) there's, like, a ton of costume transformations here that look similar. Like, while Kira used it as part of their, their, uh, shoot, what's the word I'm looking for? As part of their concert, and, like, as Mm -hmm. part of their appeal when they would go out to sing. And Cheryl Mm -hmm. does, too. Cheryl's just doing it with guitar riffs in the background, while while Kira's doing it with, you know, their little pop beats and singing about about cosmic <laughs> movement, you know, and yeah, the little the little bings that it makes when yeah. they when they transform. So they're very similar. Um, but I would really like more co- like cool costume transformations. There's also five of them doing it at the same time compared to just Cheryl. Yeah, so. and that's probably why it felt a little repetitive, like because that's like the you know like Sailor Moon, where yeah. the other Sailor Scouts transform and then Sailor Moon transforms at the end, and that's kind of the I mean, formula I don't know. that like Valkyrie Sailor did. Moon. Oh. <laughs> I love Sailor Moon. <laughs> but, what are you but talking yeah. about? What is this Sailor Moon thing? So like Sailor Moon, <laughs> when all the scouts were together and they would transform to fight evil, you would have the first four scouts transform and then Sailor Moon would transform. And they'd all have like their full thing where they'd like shout their transformation phrase and then they their bodies would like light up and the parts of their costume would like kind of like appear while uh-huh. they're transforming with, like, all these glitter and sparkles everywhere. Um, And it was all different based on their powers. They had different elements surrounding them while they were transforming. And I think that's why the Valkyrie, like, transformations were kind of off-putting and seemed very magical girlish, because while they're transforming, they're saying, you know, music is love, music is hope. And and it's very much like a henshin, like a transformation thing. So I I know that was off-putting. But I think that that's a really cool part of showcasing the Macross wardrobes like for Frontier, that was a really awesome way to transition Cheryl from one costume to the next. And in Delta, it was a really awesome way to also give Walkure different costume opportunities. And I think visually it looks awesome. So I would like a lot more cool <laughs> transformation sequences in the next Macross series and more dancing Valkyries. But they faced it out on purpose throughout the series. Well, and that's the thing. They faced it out and, and it worked. Like, I mm-hmm. think I would have gotten annoyed with it if they had done it every time Valkyrie came yeah. out, you Definitely. know? So, but I, but I thought they were cool. So I would like to see more stuff like that because I really like the wardrobe. It's a contradiction though. You're saying that you're glad that they, they phased it out, but then you're saying you want more of it. That's right. <laughs> I'm a walking contradiction. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. Makes sense. I'm, I'm a walking contradiction, but no, like if, if they continue that, like having really cool costume sequences, I will be happy. Like I love Risa Abato's wardrobe. I really like Mita Chisato's wardrobe, even though when I tried to engineer it in real life for cosplay, it doesn't always work very well. But that's just kind of 90% of anime anyways. Like anime clothes just don't work in real life most of the time. So that's not anything new. But more cool costumes, more cool ways of presenting the costumes. I will take it. Yeah, that would be that that would ask- asterisk. Gotta ask Chad what he wants from the series. Yeah, what do you what do you um, expect, want, or uh, do not want? <laughs> what I want, yeah, not, well, I know what I want, but that's never gonna happen. No hentai, no porn. That's don't don't even think about it. But um, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, Alex, it, it pains me to hear you say that. You know that, that you know that, that just you know you think that that's where my heart is all the time. <laughs> yeah, your heart. <laughs> 
Um, no, I did, no, no porn or anything like that. It's just um, <laughs> me. I've I've always wanted a uh, I've always wanted a side a side story about Destroid Pilots um, from what? like way back. And yeah, I know a lot of fans have run that one around as as well. And it's just it's been a popular theme that's going. But it's just it it seems like a story that would be great uh, for Macross, and uh, it could easily run alongside any of the existing timelines without interfering with any of them, which makes it an ideal sort of universe to be very creative in and just like you know explore whatever you want to explore and uh, and of course it you know allows you to do stuff with mecha um, but of course you know everybody's like ah destroids aren't as interesting as as the valkyries and stuff and what is macross without transforming jet fighters and i i don't know i i guess i understand um, but at the same time, I always thought that if Macross ever became something as big as like, you know, the other really popular franchises and whatnot, so it's, it's like you could easily do a story like that and nothing would be lost from the main franchise itself, right? Because there's so many of it now. And, you know, something like this new series coming out so soon after the, the last one and whatnot, you, I mean, you could totally do something like that and just pick up, you know, with Transforming Valkyries again in the next series sort of thing, right? We've always talked about the advantages of Macross over uh, franchises like they're often compared to Gundam or Pat Labor or whatever where they have a lot more I guess um, stories in a shorter period of time and uh, I think one of the disadvantages of the Macross formula is uh, although it keeps Macross fresher and you don't get you know saturated from too much Macross at any one time and things are spaced out and whatnot, I think there's disadvantages to that uh, idea as well. And I think one of the disadvantages is that you can't, uh, because your your Macross series are so infrequent, um, and there's years between each of them, except for, I guess, apparently this new one that's happening. Um, but I think one of the disadvantages of it is, is that you have to do everything macross in, like, each series, right? Like, you have to include your love triangle. You have to include your epic war story. You have to include your music. You have to include transforming Macross fighters and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I hate to keep using, you know, Macross Plus as an example, but it, it is a good example for me in that it, it is a Macross story that dived off from like the established sort of formula to a certain extent, not not completely. Um, but it does play out as more of a side story than a full blown Macross sort of production, right? Um, Macross Plus has always felt like a, a little bit of a stepchild in that respect, in that it is it is very much a you know it, it is very much a secondary story. It doesn't take place. No, well, number one, it, there's no war. That's the big thing, right? It's doesn't have the, the the grand epic scope of all the other uh, Macross series that were all very much space opera, right? Whereas this one feels like much more like it's it's far more character driven and feels like a much more personal story for the characters involved. Um, with and the the grand scope only really comes to play at the end, uh, and that's mostly due to plot because of the uh, you know the Sharon Apple character and whatnot, right? Um, but other than that, you know the the story is very the scope is very small, very self contained, um, and I think that it's one of the strong stronger Macross productions because it, it did something quite different than, than the rest. Um, that's not to say that Macross Frontier wasn't good because Macross Frontier was awesome, but it's just, you know, they're, they're different things. They're different sequels, right, that do different things. And uh, and Macross Frontier also has the benefit of time. You know, we, we, got, we had Macross Zero, which was, you know, another sort of kind of off the off the off the set path sort of series but like not a, a very different sort of tone um and so mac when macross frontier came along everybody was sort of geared and myself included was geared towards you know yeah i want a big you know bombastic you know macross space opera again you know with a big war and uh, you know a lot of you know a lot of stakes you know the galaxy at risk all the rest of that stuff you know that macross is sort of known for um, so yeah, so that's, that's still my, that, that's still my hope to this day. Well, one of my hopes, you know, but that's, that's the big one is a, is a destroyed side story. Um, I think it would, I think it would work brilliantly. Um, it's something that, it's something that feels very like when you talk about 
when we talk about IPs, especially long-running IPs, um, like Macross and Star Wars and Star Trek and stuff, you always look at the franchise and think, what would be a natural progression, you know, for some of these franchises to do? What kind of stories could they tell? And, like, sometimes it's reboot territory. Sometimes it's, you know, side story territory and you know, all that sort of thing. And I've always thought that, you know, a natural evolution for Macross would definitely be a side story like that. Um, so... That, that would be my hope. What I think is going to happen is yeah, probably on the level of what we've been getting so far. Um, Macross Frontier and Macross Delta have pretty much established the modern era of Macross in the, in the current anime industry. And so I don't see any new series as shying away from that. I think that they're going to continue to sort of explore that kind of format. Um, and uh, and the, the themes that they want to you know, deal with and, and that sort of way will be the same sort of themes that we'll see in the new Macross series as well. Um, I'm hoping that it's you know, different and interesting enough, but the, the actual, like, you know, what, what we're going to expect from it, yeah, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm fully expecting another 25-episode series um, and, uh, in, the, in a similar sort of vein. I think uh, Delta and Frontier feel very contemporary as far as like the, where anime is at right now. And so I don't see any, you know, yeah, I don't see, I don't see that changing. I think that's what we can kind of expect at this point. And until I, I read anything otherwise, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pretty much, yeah, that'll be my guess for now. Well, let me ask you both this. Um, Lady M and the Mega Road. As far as the new series, how, what are you expecting? You know, like, I know a lot of people would really like more stuff on the Mega Road 1 but, and, and Lady M. But I'm, honest, I'm not as enchanted by the Lady M mystery anymore. <laughs> uh, maybe it's because we spent so much time covering Delta that I really <laughs> just got annoyed with the Lady M mystery. And, and uh-huh. I don't really want to know who she is or what she does. Uh, with the Mega Road, like, it'd be cool if we followed... A, a mega road because we know there's more than one like if we if we followed a mega road somewhere where it went cool but like kawamori hasn't worked on anything with the mega road one because i think he's done with it and that may well, just be like yeah. what it is you know and i don't know if we necessarily need more flashback 2012 where they all leave on the mega road one and then min may's message before no one hears from them again like <laughs> That's pretty definitive. I don't know how much, like, what else you could do. And if you did decide to bring back those characters, like, what could you do? Like, we've been floating in space for, like, 50 years. We don't know where we're going. Half yeah, I don't, I don't die. Uh... You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of those I, things, like, yeah. if you do it, what content do you have? I think it was a... Sorry, Chad. Let me um, just say this really quick. I think it was a, a, a kind of like a silly question before but in this case i think it's a fair question because they fucking brought it up you know it's like that's something that most of the fans probably got tired of talking about but now it's like well you brought it up (laughs) like why'd you bring it up you know now it's going to be an annoyance whether they um refer to it or not right yeah i I was just going to say that um originally and i think we said this i said this during the um the uh the macros delta podcast as well was uh, I, I thought it was a troll at the time. I thought it was sort of like a meta commentary from Kawamori on, you know, the longtime fans who just won't let the mega road go and like the original cast and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, now it seems after seeing it mentioned like in various forms, like Frontier also had their, you know, the Richard Burla character who, you know, was obsessed with Min May and whatnot. And then this Macross Delta series also had mention of like, you know, who's Lady M and the mega road. We mentioned that and stuff. And it, I think they're, I think now, uh, looking at back on it in hindsight, I think they're just tips of the hats. I don't think they're necessarily trolls, but just a tip of the hat to the original series. Something to you know for the longtime fans to say, oh yeah, you know you remember the Mega Road. Well, we'll, we'll do a little mention, you know, just to you know just to make you feel good. Uh, about you know your fandom and stuff and that you know that the spirit of the original is still with us even after all this time kind of thing and i I think that's all that those are because i i can't see them as anything else because they ultimately like at least as the way macross frontier and macross delta have been written they didn't go anywhere with either of those Uh, i mean they mention them they name drop and they picture drop if that's a, a thing um and then that's it that's all we get so I think it's I think it's just a tip of the hat. I think that's really all that is. 
Um, they'll, they'll mention the original series and the original characters in the Mega Road in sequels, but that's all they'll do. They'll just say, you know, they'll they'll stop for a moment and say, hey, you guys, you longtime fans, remember these guys? Yeah, so do we. And uh, that, but that's it. Nothing more than that. And I, I don't think we're going to get anything more from that in the next series either. And people keep, like, fans keep bringing this up. Like, it's something that keeps coming up over and over again, right? Like, the original characters in the Mega Road, whatever happened to it? And it's just, it's clear Calamori isn't exploring it at all. Um, and we, we get just bits and pieces, maybe a little nod, and that's it. I feel like if, if it was a troll or something like that, I feel like it was a big mistake because now they've kind of like legitimized that that whole question. You know what I mean? Like fans were asking it before, and now they have an excuse to why they would ask um, or normalized it. That's what we're calling it now. But um, I think they shouldn't have done it at all. And I don't know if they should address it in the next series. It's gonna be an annoyance. I think if if they don't, I think they should just. Address it, get rid of it, and then um, move on with your stories. That's that's what I think. I think it might be a situation where um, a lot of the you know creative powers behind getting these anime made, uh, it, it could be something as simple as like you know studio notes, right? It's like everybody says we keep getting a lot of feedback from our you know Macross fan you know base or our Macross consumer base that keeps telling us they're curious about what happened to the Mega Road and and whatnot right and while Kalamori has probably had to field these sorts of questions and fan interest like his entire career um, the people making the modern Macross animes haven't and so they they look at it from maybe from like a market perspective thinking oh this is this is definitely something that people are asking about this is definitely something they want to see so maybe Maybe we should make a little bit of mention about this every time, right? To keep them included and uh, to keep them interested. And maybe that's maybe that's what's pushing these mentions of the Mega Road in the in the more modern Macross Frontier and Delta series. That's definitely something I was going to bring up. It could be just for marketing to keep the the other Valkyries and characters relevant for marketing purposes. Maybe I think we Macrossed out today because there's a lot of a lot of excitement. So where can we find you, Celia Rose, when you're not on this uh, unnamed show? <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Planet Twinkle. Uh, you can also find me on the reanimated podcast on iTunes, part of the repacked podcast lineup every month. All right. Chad, where can we find you? You can find me on uh, Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash macross mecha manual and um, you can also email me if you want at uh, marchingcw at hotmail.com and this is XO you can find me on twitter at macross tweet or you can find me on facebook at macross central yes there you go see you next week I don't even know what we're going to do this next week see you soon bye <laughs>